presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Idaho National Laboratory, mentoring talent and finding solutions for energy and security challenges. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Sleep is more than just being unconscious. Sleep is vital for your health. But what do scientists really know about sleep? Stay awake and find out. Science Trek is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek. And welcome to my bedroom. Today we're going to learn about sleep. And later on in the show, we'll learn more about your brain. But first, let's find out about sleep. <sighs> I don't know what to do. Hey, what's on your mind? I have to give a talk tomorrow on sleep. I just don't know what to say. What is sleep? Don't feel bad. Scientists don't really know exactly why we sleep, but science has some answers. Take a look at this. All animals sleep. Birds, fish, dogs, humans all need to sleep. Sleep is important to the body's ability to rejuvenate. While we're sleeping, the body repairs cells, healing from injury or illness. Sleep is especially important for our brains. Some research suggests that while we sleep, the brain flushes out waste products in the cells that build up while we're awake. It helps us wake up with a clean start to the day. So how do we fall asleep? Located in the center of your brain is the pineal gland. When it gets dark in bedtime, this gland sends out a hormone known as melatonin. This causes your body to relax and get ready for sleep. Now sleep is made up of several cycles and each cycle is made up of several stages. The first stage happens as you're falling asleep. That may take a few minutes, and you may be aware of what's happening around you. In the next stage, our body temperature drops, and you no longer know what's going on. Your heart rate and breathing become very regular. As you fall into the next stages, and eventually into the deepest sleep, your blood pressure drops, and your breathing slows. You're very relaxed, and this is the time when your body is healing and restoring your energy levels. These stages are called non-rapid eye movement sleep. About every 90 to 120 minutes, you move into the REM, or rapid eye movement sleep stage. It's called this because during this time, your eyes move rapidly and randomly side to side. An electrocephalogram, or an EEG, tracks the brain waves when your brain moves into REM and all the stages of sleep. And though you can apparently dream in other stages, you do your most memorable and vivid dreaming in REM sleep. And when you're in REM sleep, your brain waves look more like they do when you're awake. Your breathing becomes more rapid and your skeletal muscles become paralyzed. Sleep scientists believe that so you can't accidentally get up and hurt yourself by acting out your dreams. REM sleep is tied to learning and development. Babies spend 50% of their sleep in REM and 50% in stage three sleep. Scientists who study sleep think REM sleep is tied to how our brains store memories and help us solve problems. We seem to have more REM sleep when we've been in unusual situations that require learning lots of new tasks. After a few minutes, you slip back into a lighter sleep stage, and then the sleep cycle begins again. What happens when you don't sleep? Going without sleep leads to sleep debt or sleep deficit. You get tired. You have trouble staying awake and paying attention in school. You don't learn as well. You may overeat and be grumpy, and you feel sore and stressed, and your reaction time is impaired. Even missing just one hour of sleep a night can cause a whole host of problems. And if you miss lots of sleep over a long period of time, you can get really sick. And extreme sleep deprivation can lead to death. So it's really important to get enough sleep. So how can I improve my sleep? Avoid electronic devices in the hour before bed. Don't text, watch TV, or play video games. The light from these screens can stimulate your brain so it's harder to go to sleep. The best advice is to get into a routine. Do the same thing before you go to bed at night. Make sure everything's ready for the next day so you don't worry about it. Brush your teeth, read a book, listen to a story or music, and go to bed. And get up at the same time, even on weekends. Hey, that's great advice. 
Maybe I should go to sleep. Good idea. Sweet dreams. And joining me now to answer your questions about sleep at the St. Alphonsus Pulmonary and Sleep Medicine Center are Dr. Janet O'Donnell, an internist specializing in sleep medicine, and Nancy Nadalski, a family nurse practitioner who works with folks to get a good night's sleep. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me, and it's a joy to be here with my friend Janet. Okay, let's go to your questions. My name is Dominic, and I want to know what is sleep? What is sleep has been the question for anybody who has studied medicine, and for the last 50 years, we finally got the technology to be able to identify the difference between being awake and being asleep. But we still really don't know what it is. But since evolutionary times, we know that sleep has stayed with this whole evolutionary process, so it must be important. And we hope that in the next 20, 40 years, we understand even more about what it is exactly, other than just lying very still with our eyes closed and breathing. Hi, my name is Ashlyn, and my question is, why do our brains need sleep? Our brain is working all the time. It's not like when we go to sleep, our brain shuts off and all of our body actually shuts off. We used to believe that until you know, just recently when we could really identify what was going on under the covers. Our brain needs a break from all of the input of the day. And so during sleep time, our brain is able to kind of download all of the experiences of the day. Decides what stays, what goes into long-term memory, what goes into short-term memory. It's a time also for us to kind of sort through what the emotional experience is of the day. So that's why our brain needs sleep. Hi, my name is Alicia, and and I go to Dalton Elementary. My question is, why do we have dreams? When we go to sleep, we actually go through a number of different stages of sleep, and one of those stages is REM sleep. We actually can dream in all of the stages, but we do most of our dreaming in REM sleep, and REM is very critical for memory. It helps us put the experiences that we have during the day into memory. And it also helps with our emotions, how we feel. So dreaming is a critical part of sleep. Hi, my name is Vincent. My question is, why is it hard to fall asleep? Some nights it's harder or more difficult to fall, fall asleep than other nights. A lot of our problems falling asleep or if it's difficult to fall asleep, it, a lot of that depends on what's happened during the day. If the day has been stressful, if the day has been full of a lot of um, things that you're not used to, maybe you are actually on a holiday and you're sleeping in another bed, so something's kind of turned up and, and changed your pattern and your routine. So falling asleep People who are very anxious have a much more difficult time falling asleep. They get this busy brain and this racing thought, and it's very difficult for them to be able to let their body um, just move into that relaxation and all of those stages of sleep. Hi, my name is Brenna, and I go to Dalton Elementary School. My question is, why do people snore? People snore because there can be a narrowing in the airway. And snoring is just vibration of the muscles in the back of the airway. So if, for example, you're congested or you have very large tonsils and air is trying to move in and out of your lungs, it can create a snoring sound when that air passage is narrow. So snoring is not normal, but certainly a number of people snore at night. Hibernation is a very deep sleep, but bears really aren't hibernators. They fall into a state called topor. Unlike true hibernators, bears can wake up and their body temperature doesn't change as much. But bears do sleep a long time. They can go up to 100 days without eating, drinking, or going to the bathroom. Hi, my name is Jaden. Um, my third question is, how much is too much sleep? 
we can't ever get too much sleep because our body will tell us how much we need. If we find that we are um, falling asleep during the day, if we find that we are not getting up in the morning feeling restored, it's because we really haven't had the kind of sleep that our body loves. In other words, we haven't been able to get through all those nutrient sleep stages that help us grow and help us um, develop. And so getting too much sleep, our body will tell us how much we need. If we're not getting good sleep, it, our body will keep trying to chase it. It'll keep saying, oh, I'll catch a nap here. Oh, I'll catch a nap there. And it really never is that real nutrient-dense sleep. Hi, my name is Ella, and my question is, um, why, why is it easier to sleep in the dark than in the light? It's easier to sleep in the dark because a number of things happen in our body when it gets dark out. We actually have an internal clock and that clock is called a circadian rhythm and it lasts about 24 hours. So as we go through the day and then into the evening, our body produces something called melatonin and melatonin is produced in the dark. So it makes us sleepy. So when melatonin is produced in our body and it gets dark out, it's then easier for us to go to sleep. And we're also operating on that 24-hour clock. Hi, my name is Kaden, and um, my question is, why do we um, move our eyes so much when we sleep? Our eyes are moving back and forth rapidly in a particular stage of sleep called REM. And REM, again, is where we do most of our dreaming sleep. In REM sleep, most of our muscles don't work, but some of the muscles that work include our breathing, which is very important so we can continue to breathe in our sleep, but also eye movements. It doesn't necessarily correlate with what we're dreaming about, but with it being one of the muscles that work, we do see eye movements when we're monitoring people in their sleep when they're in REM sleep. So why did you want to work in a career that deals with sleep? If you're interested in a career or have a special interest in sleep disorders, first that would fall into the sciences. If you have an interest in sleep, I would recommend maybe doing a field trip or visiting a local sleep center. You can get into the field of sleep in a number of different ways. You could go into medicine, you can go into nursing, or you could go into the field where you actually do sleep studies on people. My favorite thing about working in sleep medicine and adding it to my practice in psychiatry is that my patients are so grateful when they are finally able to trust that they're going to be able to initiate and maintain sleep. My patients don't all have um, sleep apnea or some other kind of obstructive disorder that's getting in the way of their sleeping. Oft times for me, and for somebody wanting to learn more about treating insomnia, to be able to understand the cognitive behavioral pieces of sleep, what do we do during the day that actually is a barrier to being able to get all of the chemicals lined up so that we can initiate sleep. That's a whole nother field and that actually is in psychology or behavioral medicine. So there's a lot of different directions to go when you want to get into the field of sleep. And I'm sure there's going to be more. Sleep is essential for the brain, but how does the brain work? So let's learn a little bit more about your brain. The brain weighs about three pounds. It's made up of 100 billion nerve cells or neurons. Electrical impulses pass from cell to cell. Messages go out of your brain, down your spinal cord, and out to your body, and then back again all in an instant. The brain, the spinal cord, and all those nerves make up the nervous system. It's your body's information system. Scientists say there's enough electricity from all those messages in your brain and body to turn on a light in the refrigerator. The brain is made up of several parts. There's the brainstem. It controls your body's basic automatic functions like breathing. 
There's the cerebellum, which controls things like movement, your physical skills. And then there's the limbic system. That makes up about one-fifth of your brain. There are glands, like the pituitary and the hypothalamus. They work with the brain stem to control body temperature, growth, and blood pressure. Then there's the cerebrum. That's the thinking, creative part of your brain. It's also the biggest part of your brain. Along with its thin covering the cortex, it's the part of the brain that governs voluntary movements. It's where you think, where you perceive or sense things. And because of your cortex, you can understand and remember, communicate and create. The brain has two sides. Each controls the opposite side of the body. Each side also controls certain skills. The right side of your brain controls music and art, the creative stuff. And the left side handles numbers and words and problem solving. And there's a band of cells between the two parts, or hemispheres of the brain, so that the left side knows what the right side is doing. The human brain is so soft that you could cut it with a butter knife. That's why you should wear your helmet when you ride your bike. You need to protect your brain. Your brain and body also put out chemicals called hormones or neurotransmitters. Hormones help regulate your body's growth, help you mature, maintain your digestion, even tell you when to sleep. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that send messages between cells. Some neurotransmitters tell your heart to beat or your lungs to breathe, while others help regulate your mood, whether you're happy or sad. These chemicals play a part in how you remember things, why you dream, who you are. Your thoughts and your feelings, your breathing and your growing are all controlled by your brain. And your brain continues to develop even after you're born and continues to grow and change even as an adult. Your brain is what makes you, you. Hi, my name is Chun Li. My question is, how do you get nightmares? Nightmares are a product of dreaming. And depending on what age you are, or maybe even the experience that you've had recently, or maybe a long time ago, those memories actually can surface again. And nightmares, like with young children, sometimes they have night terrors, and it's more than just a dream. It is a very strong emotional reaction. And we know that when someone is having a nightmare, that it is a frightening, almost paralyzing experience. And we also know that once we're able to wake up and be able to realize that this is happening in a dream, that it's not happening to us at that moment, then we can reass be reassured and actually return to sleep. Hi, my name is Joanna. Mm. My question is, mm, how is it that when we sleep, time seems to go faster? When we sleep at night, it can seem like the night goes very fast, especially if we're good sleepers. For people who don't sleep well, who may wake up a lot at night or lay awake for a long period of time, actually the nights can seem kind of long. But when we sleep well and we go to sleep, we really don't have an awareness of time passing by. We go through different stages of sleep, but we don't have a sense of time. And I think that's how it can seem that the night goes by fast. Hi, my name is Nicole, and um, what happens if you have electronics in your bed and you don't get enough sleep at night? So electronics in the room can be quite disruptive to sleep. Part of what happens is that the light coming off from the electronics, which is blue light, can actually affect our ability to fall asleep. So I think it's best if for at least the one hour before we go to bed that we really try not to watch TV, look at our cell phones, or be on iPads or play video games because doing those activities right up until the time you go to bed can make it hard to fall asleep. It affects our melatonin and melatonin is one of the hormones that our body makes that makes us sleepy. Hi, my name is McGregor. Why do animals sleep and hibernate? Animals sleep and hibernate because they are part of the living system. And to realize that hibernation and sleep are completely different. In fact, 
a bear, let's because that's the species that's always related to hibernation, when they hibernate, they actually have staging of sleep. But in hibernation, a bear doesn't eat, and a bear doesn't um, drink water, and they don't urinate, they don't go to the bathroom. And that's the difference between hibernation and sleeping. A lot of species do hibernate. Um, all species sleep. My name is Tat. My question is, why aren't we able to stay up all night? It's very difficult to stay up for prolonged periods of time. Our body has an internal clock, and every 24 hours, we have a period of time where we're awake and a period of time where our body is yearning to sleep. What happens during the day is our body produces something called adenosine, and that kind of builds up throughout the day. And it makes us sleepy, and it makes us tired. Once we fall asleep, the levels of that substance, adenosine, will go down. So there's a number of things that make us tired as the day goes on and builds up to making us sleepy and go to sleep. Hi, my name is Brooke, and my question is, how many hours of sleep do you get a day? Depending on your age, the requirement for sleep varies. For example, a newborn baby may require 16 or 18 hours of sleep because of how rapidly they're changing and growing. A teenager requires about nine to 10 hours of sleep. But as we get older, we generally think that eight hours is enough. Dolphins and ducks have something in common. They both can sleep by shutting down only half of their brain at a time. That way dolphins can continue swimming and breathing and ducks can avoid predators. And snakes don't have eyelids, so it's tough to tell when a snake is asleep. My name is Gareth and my question is, why do some of your dreams wake you up? During the course of sleep, we have several sleep stages. Stages one, two, three, and then REM sleep. And REM sleep is the dreaming sleep. And there's a part of our brain that is more activated during REM sleep versus another part of our brain that is not as activated. And so after we have REM sleep, we always have an arousal. In other words, we always wake up. And we may not remember it, because it's usually pretty short, and depending on if you have a really good sleep drive, then you'll immediately return to the other stages of sleep. But we remember dreams because sometimes they wake us up because they are um, pretty strong with information or startle us, um, but oftentimes we know somebody's had a good night's sleep when they wake up and they, they talk about the dream that they just had. Hi, my name is Gary. Uh, do plants sleep? So plants don't technically sleep. You actually need a brain in order to sleep. Uh, they don't have a central nervous system, but what plants do have is a cycle. They kind of follow the sun. So they do have sort of a circadian rhythm where they may close at night with the loss of the sun and may open depending on the plant, but they don't technically sleep. My name is Kyra and my question is, how are sleep and meditation the same or not the same? Sleep and meditation are really quite different. With meditation, we are awake. We are in a relaxed state, there's a different brain wave. However, with meditation, you're not going through all of those sleep stages and um, actually, when somebody's meditating, we want them to be awake. We want them to be able to experience um, the thoughts that they're having, to stay with them. Whereas with sleep, there is a strong drive to basically shut down that door and you're unconscious. And meditation is a fully conscious experience. My name is Evan and, and my question is, why do we go to sleep on one side and wake up on the other? It's not uncommon to change positions at night. So 
during the night, we may roll over from one side to another, maybe sleep on our back or sleep on our tummy. So that is normal to do in sleep. Hi, my name is Asha. My question is, why, why do we dream sometimes and sometimes not? Dreaming is part of the natural, really healthy sleep cycle. And so when somebody wakes up in the morning and they say, I slept so well, most likely they did dream and they had REM sleep. People don't always remember their dreams, but some people have a very vivid recall about dreaming. But if we've had a really good um, restorative night's sleep, you can rest assured you've had some REM sleep and you've had some dreaming. If someone is interested in a career that deals with sleep, what should he or she study in school? I got very interested in sleep in my training. I'm a lung specialist and I got interested in how people sleep at night and specifically how they breathe. So at a time when I was in my training, we were just learning about something called sleep apnea, which is where people will stop breathing at night in their sleep. So that's how I got interested in the field of sleep. I'm a nurse practitioner and my field of study right out of nurse practitioning school um, was psychiatry or is psychiatry. And what I learned is that my patients who have depression and anxiety and any other kind of mental health diagnosis, if I could get them to sleep, all of their other symptoms fell into place much, much, much faster. And so I became just an advocate, a cheerleader for all of my patients to be able to um, get into a good sleep pattern of initiating and maintaining sleep. Not just one night or two nights, but every single night. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. My thanks to our guests for answering students' questions today. Thank you so much for having me. It was great fun. It is great fun, and it's always fun to talk about sleep. You can learn more about sleep and lots of other scientific topics on the Science Trek website. And we'll answer more questions about sleep on Science Trek, the web show. And if you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy. You and your class can win prizes. You can send it as an email or as a video question, recorded on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Idaho National Laboratory, mentoring talent and finding solutions for energy and security challenges. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.